Now, most cameras um, will have a built-in microphone that's 360 degrees. It's okay, but it really doesn't do the job in terms of complementing cinematic storytelling. I would say that quality audio, quality music, is just as important as quality picture when you're trying to do you know cinematic storytelling it just cheapens your video if the sound is bad it's intimidating because you don't want to spend more and more money on all these accessories but you don't have to um, so what i want to talk about is some of the options that you can get to improve the quality of your sound. So um, first thing I'm gonna recommend if you're on a budget is uh, just getting a shotgun mic. It's basically a directional mic that mounts onto the top of the camera and it's directional. So whatever you point it at, it's gonna be capturing audio from that direction. Now, if, if you're buying a shotgun mic, um, I wanna show you kind of the differences and because the price is so varied across shotgun mics, um, this is actually the first one that I ever bought is, is a Tackstar, Jesus, a SGC598. I think we got it off Amazon, it's made in China, but it's been pretty good. So I'm gonna show you kind of a quick demo of what it sounds like between these two microphones because the in-body camera is okay, but you'll see what I mean. Now I'm switching it up to the Tax Star, same distance, and we'll see how that sounds. Now, when you compare that, say, to even this Tackstar, which is a fairly inexpensive shotgun mic, just mounted to the top of the camera in the same distance, about 10 feet away, uh, there's a notable quality difference. And if you wanted to, say, upgrade to a shotgun mic, and I, I do recommend it because the longevity of these, um, you know, if you buy it this year, you'll keep it for forever. It's a really good microphone, is like the Rode NTG5 or the Sennheiser MKE600. So here's what the MKE600 sounds like. So now that I've moved the position of the shotgun mic about four feet away, let's see how that sounds and uh, yeah, let's have a listen. Now, I wanna be clear, this is not a fair comparison for what this microphone can do because it is only using a 3.5 millimeter jack, which is essentially a headphone jack, right? It's plugging into the camera amplifier and much like this Tackstar, um, you're not really stretching its legs in terms of what it can do uh, for quality. Um, but the reason I like the Sennheiser over the road is two main reasons. One, it's a little bit less expensive when you consider it comes with some accessories to mount it to a camera but more importantly it doesn't require an external power source to work 
it's, it's the one thing that always kept me from wanting uh, to buy the Rode NTG5 is that you need an external power source to power the microphone, whereas the Sennheiser can run off of a AA battery. The way I see it, the whole point of doing this is to have something you can do yourself and it's very compact and you can stay light on your feet. One thing I'll prepare you for, and uh, we'll, we'll get to camera bodies here in a moment. Um, <laughs> if you first plug in to the headphone jack to listen to playback on the R5, what you hear is so bad. I thought the footage was gonna be unusable. I thought something went horribly wrong with the audio recording, but it's just the playback with the built-in, you know, what's in the camera. It just sounds like crap. And uh, rest assured, the footage turned out perfect, the audio recorded cleanly. It's just when you plug in to, to monitor to make sure you're getting good clean audio, it's only one channel, the left I think, and th the quality of it is like pff, not good. So, <laughs> you know, that's a, again, compromise that you make with having a, a small camera body. But it's, it's odd that the R5 does that, but I don't actually get that with the Canon 80D. And this camera came out, whatever, seven years ago, so. <laughs> A uh, little bit of a bug there. I do want to point out that independent audio recorders uh, are a really good way to go for a lot of applications. Um, they have built-in microphones that kind of capture a 360 degree radius. Um, and you can plug in XLR mics, you can plug in 3.5 millimeter microphones, and they record onto a separate memory card. Um, here's why I like them. They sound incredibly better than like a traditional in-body camera setup. Sound start. Sound start. In three, two, in three, two, one. One. Low end sounds. Um, are hard to pick up on a microphone, so you increase the sensitivity or gain of the microphone. Problem is, something comes into frame, makes a loud bang sound or, you know, whatever, it tends to sound really broken up and unusable. Well, floating points allow you to record basically dual points for gain so that no matter if something is really quiet or if something gets really loud, <laughs> it's always gonna be recording at high fidelity, really high quality, uh, no matter the circumstances. And this is what, like an example of using a independent recorder of a car going by versus using a shotgun mic mounted onto a camera with the car going by. The quality is notable. The only thing that I don't like about doing this, especially if you're just kind of running and gunning and doing this on your own, is you have to sequence all the audio together. So because they're MP3 files or they're, they're separate files to the video, nothing is synced to what you recorded. So you have to line it up um, and mark it. You know, you'll see people with slates or, you know, clapping their hands doing that. Um, but yeah, you, you have to match up the audio. If you just plug in directly to the preamp of the camera, then it's all recorded together, so it saves you a bit of time in editing, so something to consider. The last type of microphone I wanna talk about, and it, it is really an important one, um, is something like a lapel mic. Um, what I'm wearing right now, this little guy right here, this is, This is typically what you see for, um, you know, interviews, documentaries. Uh, lapel mics are typically connected to a transmitter like this um, that, you know, gives you better quality audio and it's wireless and, you know, it's, it's really the best and only way 
uh, to go, I think, if you're going to be recording and, and interviewing people. Um, my recommendation, uh, I remember when we first bought the Rode Wireless Go. It was the first iteration of this. Actually, I have them still. Hold on. Here we go. This is the, uh, the very first of its kind from Rode, uh, the Rode Wireless Go. The previous generation of a transmitter and receiver, they were like four times the size of this. And what was really cool is they have a built-in microphone, so you don't actually need uh, a lavalier uh, or another microphone. They just, you can literally hold this like this or, you know, clip it on to anything. And it's a really versatile solution to, you know, like I said, keeping it lightweight, keeping it simple and easy to use. Um, the only issue I ran into these is that I don't know why I never had them inspected, but I think it's the magnetic shielding on the Rode Wireless Go that had an issue because cell phones or for whatever reason, I'd be recording out in the field hey everybody, welcome to and I would get a today. horrible amount of feedback or like hissing and popping and it really got annoying. Um, but no one really made a competitor to this product uh, and the Rode Wireless Go 2 had come out and the only difference really uh, from the initial one was uh, two people talking at the same time. Before you couldn't do that. So now, recording right onto the video footage, you could have one person talking, clip it onto another person, and have uh, both dialogue tracks synced with the video. That's a big deal. Yeah, I see. Oh, that looks pretty cool. Yeah. I was wondering why the bottom was all loose. <laughs> Look at that. Saves a lot of time. And again, if you're doing this by yourself, uh, it's ideal. There is a new wireless pro i think from rode uh and that might be worth considering getting instead um, they didn't exist when i bought the twos uh, but the difference is between the pro and the twos mainly is the fact that they have a floating point uh, for recording so remember i was describing in you know independent audio recorders that could whether it's loud or quiet you're always getting high fidelity sound now uh these little guys uh, will be able to do that it's a little bit more money but I wish they existed <laughs> before I bought the twos because I would have just bought in the pros, but that's mixing my favorite thing about being able to sync audio with video easily and an independent recorder that can record high fidelity, very nice quality audio. Um, yeah, that's, I, I would, if you can spring for it, go for it. It's about 400 bucks, which isn't cheap, but you will use this forever. It, it, it will be a shotgun mic that you can use in studios for podcasts you can use it for you know mounting on top of the camera out in the field uh, you can use it as a standalone recording system if someone's a sound guy and has a boom with it if you can afford it go for the Sennheiser uh, if not at, at the very least get an entry-level shotgun mic like this one because the in-body microphones don't don't cut it the one thing I would say that uh, would be extremely beneficial is the Rode wireless go to or the Rode wireless pro um, mainly because it is the best way to capture dialogue and people talking um, there's nothing worse than doing an interview or a documentary piece and the person talking you can't have clear audio for their dialogue it's really frustrating for the audience and it's frustrating for editing too so that's going to be another 500 bucks or 300 bucks 500 for the Pro and 300 for the Wireless Go 2. So keep that in mind as well.